Praise God, everyone, and welcome to today's devotion. Let's pray together. Almighty God, you are so faithful. We love you, and we worship you for who you are. Speak to us and use me as your vessel of honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today's topic is we are, is, we are the light of the world. We are the light of the world. So today we are deviating from the book of Romans, but we will continue with the same subject of assurance of victory. And so um, in the process of being assured of God's victory, the Lord is reminding us that we are the light of the world. And I want us to read Matthew chapter 4, the gospel according to Matthew chapter 4, from verse 16 to verse 23. The people living in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. For that time, on Jesus, for that time, on Jesus began. From that time on, Jesus began to preach, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. called Peter, of heaven is near. As Jesus was walking beside the sea of Galilee, he saw two disciples, Simon called Peter, and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. And at once they left their nets and followed him, going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee, preparing their nets. Jesus called them, and immediately they left their boat and their, fa and their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and, and, and sickness among the people, the word of the Lord. So here, uh, remember, let me take you back to the passage in uh, Romans where Paul talked about sin. He at the same time talks about uh, the spirit of God who now uh, helps us um, to be the sons of God, or when we, we ask, when we invite the Holy Spirit, then God makes us the son of God. He also talked about suffering, and, uh, and, um, and then as we suffer, what does God help, um, expects from us? He expects us to live a, a life of um, being conquerors, being overcomers in uh, this world. And then we also learned what our place is in this world. And today, uh, we are, we are, we are we, I mean, the Lord is taking this further by reminding us that even as we have a place uh, in the kingdom of God, then we also need to know that we are the light in this world. So Paul here, I mean, Jesus here is quoting, uh, not, um, Jesus is quoting uh, what, what Paul, I mean, he's, he's, uh, he's quoting what had been uh, uh, said by, 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 what had been said by Isaiah, and uh, he wants to know, to, he wants the congregation or his listeners to know what uh, was happening. People were in darkness. Remember between the Old Testament to this time of Jesus, there had been a period of years, 600 years where people uh, had not had any prophet, they had, ha they had not had an opportunity to have um, someone speak to them, they were living in darkness. But even uh, during the Old Testament, people were living in darkness because they had not, uh, many times they would not follow God, they would not accept Jesus, I mean, uh, they would not submit to them. Lord, and that is why Jesus is, uh, and that's what is being 
quoted here in uh, in these verses where the where where it begins by telling us that um that in land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali, the way of the sea along, along Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people living in darkness have seen a great light on those living on the land of the shadow of death. A light, a light has dawned. So why he's talking about that is because he's come, so he's, uh, he's now the light. There are a few lessons that I want us to learn from uh, this passage. And one, Jesus' Jesus's light is manifested among the followers. And that is what he's saying in verse 16. That Jesus' light is manifested among his followers. And uh, actually, when you look at the last bit of that verse, verse 16, he says, a light has dawned. A light has, has dawned. And somewhere in, uh, in Matthew, in the same, same book of Matthew, the following chapter, verse 14 to verse 16, Jesus says that you are, he now turns to the listener and he, listeners, his listeners, and he tells them that you are the light of the world. And he goes on in chapter 7, he talks about the light and he says that you cannot put on, put, you cannot light a candle and put it under a table. That is in chapter 10 of the book of Matthew. He says that it has to be seen. It has to be uh, visible. It has to be put in a place where uh, it will, um, in, a, in a place where everyone uh, will be able to make use of it. And so this in the context of what Paul is talking about in the book of Romans, where he's reminding us that uh, the moment we live away our sinful nature, then we are meant to become the sons of God. So the Lord is reminding us in Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 to 15, that we are the light of the world. But let's move on to see what else the Lord is telling us in this passage that I have read. Jesus calls his people and as they are, from where they are, being, being who they are. So as we progress uh, in this passage, from verse 17, you see where Jesus, from verse 18 rather, you see where Jesus is calling disciples. And he's calling them from uh, different places as they are, as from where, wherever they are, from different places, and uh, whoever they are. So God is calling you. And it doesn't matter who you are or where you are. It doesn't matter what has been happening in your life. It doesn't matter what tribe or what community you come from. It doesn't matter the amount of sin that you have found yourself in. The Lord loves you as you are. And that's why he died on the cross for you. Because he wants you to be made his son, and he wants you to be a witness. He wants you to go out there and shine the, the light of him and make the world know that they don't need to continue to be slaves of uh, the sins because Jesus came to set us free. He paid that debt on the cross so that we can be free. And let's look at what he says. The, the next, I mean, the third point is that God calls uh, God's call invites and empower, and empowers choices. So verse 11 says this. Let me read verse 11 uh, of chapter 4. Verse 11 says, The devil left him, and angels came and attended him. So that's a different uh, story. But I want you to notice how God empowers when he calls you, he, emp he will empower you, he will set you free, he will deliver you. And uh, the whole point is because he wants you to be a role model. He wants to change you, he wants 
to transform you. So even as we reflect on this year's theme, where the Lord is calling us to be uh, transformed, you cannot be transformed when you are still in that pit, in that bondage that you are in. And today I'm speaking specifically to unbelievers. So you cannot continue, you cannot be transformed um, when you, are, when you are still there in that bondage, you have to make a decision of coming out of that a bit. And so the Lord is calling you and it doesn't matter who you are or where you come from. He loves you as you are and he would want you to know him and to be used of him. Let's pray together. Everlasting God, we pray for that person who is under the sound of my voice. And more so that person who has not accepted you as his Lord and Savior. Would you convict them? Would you convince them and cause them to accept you as their Lord and Savior? And if you are out there and you would want to give your life to Jesus, I invite you to repeat this after me. Dear Jesus, I am a sinner. Forgive me. Cleanse me with the precious, with your precious blood. And uh, delete my name from the book, from the list of the people who are perishing. And instead I pray that you write my name in the book of life. Lord, fill me with the power of the Holy Spirit and it teach me your word and even your knowledge. And so if you have prayed that prayer, I invite you uh, to call that number that is on the screen and someone will walk with you, someone will disciple you, or you can even look for uh, a pastor somewhere or someone who is a believer and that person will disciple you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord watch over you. May the Lord protect you and the blessings of God Almighty Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.